everyone, Daisy here. Welcome to my channel. And boy, has it been a minute. I'm so sorry I haven't posted on this channel in quite some time. And it seemed fitting that for my first video back, I outlined the main reason that I have been a bit light on the content, at least for the second half of last year. I'm talking, of course, about all the planning I did for my wedding. Now, for those of you who don't know, my husband and I are one of those millennial couples who had to postpone getting married multiple times because of dummy politicians around the world who engaged in a large-scale power grab by shutting down the world for two years for a virus that the vast majority of people have a more than 99% chance of surviving. Calm down, Daisy. Remember, this is your non-political channel. Anyway, we, like so many other people in the 20s and 30s, were prevented from having our wedding ceremony when we wanted to have it because of COVID restrictions. So in 2021, we decided upon what was technically our third postponement, postponement to elope, get married in a civil ceremony, and hope and pray that 2022 would be the year that we could finally have our big celebration with family and friends. And it was really such a lovely thing to do. You know, the elopement was on a perfect day. We got married in the celebrant's living room with witnesses he picked. It was very romantic and really worth doing. But both my husband and myself were still determined to have our big ceremony and reception. So everyone, here is a good taste of what kept me offline for much of the second half of 2022. My husband and I had our big day in New South Wales at the beautiful St. Paul's College at the University of Sydney. Now, anyone who knows me will tell you that I don't do things the way most people do them, and I also don't do, I don't do things by halves. So it should come as no surprise that while I was determined to have a very traditional classic wedding, it was going to be with the volume turned up very loud, so to speak, and a huge part of creating that was the design. When most people would have had pretty but quite typical formal wedding decorations, I was blessed to have the talent of one of the best designers on planet Earth to create an extraordinary theme and style for the day. Part Victorian, part contemporary, part Broadway, the design really was integral to transporting the guests out of modern Australian society into a world of flowers, music, tradition and flamboyance. And of course, I had a wedding dress to match. What was also very important to me in creating this otherworldly wedding to end all weddings, so to speak, was the choice of music and readings in the ceremony. Now again, I wanted a mixture of traditional and classical, but with an original spin. So for example, in addition to using the very famous and very beautiful Corinthians chapter 13 reading, love is patient, love is kind, etc. I also used a stunning poem by Lord Byron called It Is The Hour, which was read just before we said our vows. As for the music, similar deal. Well, I chose some traditional hymns, such as Be Thou My Vision, and had Bach's Ave Maria played by organ and cello, I walked down the aisle to the wonderful St. Paul's College Chapel Choir singing none other than Zadok the Priest by George Friedrich Handel, which many of you will recognize from the recent coronation of King Charles III, as well as, you know, the coronation of every British monarch since King George II in 1727.
like I said, I don't do things by halves. Then there was the reception that followed. Now, Bride of the World, I'm going to share with you a few tips on how to have a wedding that looks really expensive but is actually significantly cheaper than it appears. Number one, don't have a DJ or hire a band. They cost a bomb and logistically are a pain in the neck because of all the tech drama that inevitably ensues and only serve to turn the event into a dance party. And look, well sure, some people really like that kind of thing at a wedding. You can get the same thing after the wedding if you and your guests migrate down to the local pub or club. Then you won't have had to pay for it or cleaned up after it. Instead, do what I did and have live acoustic dinner music played expertly by a beautiful pianist. The ambiance is created, it looks incredibly posh, and it's a hell of a lot cheaper to organize than a band or a DJ. You are much better off, I think, putting some of that extra money into a brilliant designer to create a truly beautiful event. Second, to compensate for the lack of live entertainment, have really good speeches. Encourage anyone who is speaking at your wedding to think outside the proverbial box of what's usually included in a wedding speech, oh, and also tell them to avoid roasts. They're not funny and leave everyone who's not in on the joke, which is most of the guests, feeling supremely awkward. Additionally, Chase up which other friends or relatives of yours might have some sort of musical or performance talent. You'd be surprised who's out there and offer them the opportunity to incorporate their skills as part of the reception. I am fortunate enough to have a lot of that kind of talent in my immediate circles and it really made the reception so much fun and just so meaningful. And if you yourself enjoy treading the proverbial boards, why not perform at your own wedding? That's what I did in lieu of a speech. on the alcohol. Now I know you might feel like blowing off steam with your guests at the wedding reception with a decent amount of a libation so to speak, but as is the case with live music or a DJ, you can get the same thing after the reception at your local pub or club and you won't have to pay for it or clean up after it. My suggestion would be to provide a basic array of alcoholic beverages which are absolutely nice enough but not, you know, out of some obscure chateau in France somewhere in the Dordogne region. That way people certainly won't feel cheated because it's nice booze but they won't be incentivized to just keep drinking all night. 
Couple that with a large amount of really, really good food in the form of share platters rather than plated meals, and people literally will not have room to consume copious amounts of alcohol. Less mess, less expense, and less risk of drunk old Uncle Mackie giving a really awkward impromptu speech about, well, insert family drama here. And a final tip for any brides out there, always choreograph your wedding waltz. Now this isn't a tip to lower expenses, this is a tip to give your wedding something that a lot of others simply don't have. Now it's all very well to have a beautiful ceremony and exquisite reception, but if you get up there in your beautiful wedding dress with hubby to do a wedding dance and all you've got in you at that point is to rock awkwardly from side to side, it's quite the anticlimax and you will not like it. Now there are a reasonable number of choreographers out there who run couples lessons specifically to choreograph wedding dances. I would highly recommend you do some Googling and have a look. My husband and I were so glad we did that. We had so much fun learning the routine and the result was, at least I think, just lovely. There you have it everyone. That's what I was up to for the second half of last year. I hope you enjoyed this video, I certainly enjoyed making it, and I will see you all very soon.